Hi everyone, welcome to Gunpla TV. Hey guys, sponsored by Hobby Link Japan. We're back with episode 48. Episode 50 is just around the corner. I can't believe it's there. So, yeah, only a couple episodes away. And we will let you know in 49 when 50 will be online. Yeah, we'll give you the airing date for that, yeah. the scheduled airing date. And uh, for now, we're going to look more at Ryan's Hasegawa Raptor, yep. and we're going to look at uh, the RG Zaku in a little bit more depth. But before we uh, do all of that, is there something you would like to show everybody, Ryan? Yes, I. You won't believe what I found. <clears throat> All right, is it in the shot yet? What about now? Okay, maybe pull it back. How are we doing? Good? Okay, Ryan, go. Thanks, Sid. No problem. So, yeah, I found this kit. I, I've had a hankering recently for uh, building a ship, especially the Yamato. After building the spaceship Yamato, I don't know, there's something that intrigues me. And uh, we have this one 200 and 50th scale kit and uh, it's the price is really good and you can see the it's all like already molded yeah, all the hull is one yeah. piece look at the size of that yeah thing. like just the Two size pieces. just the size of the guns yeah insane but <clears throat> there's one problem with this kit so no, what's that it actually might be too big for me that's what she said <laughs> no she didn't <laughs> So Sid, um, you have something very interesting to show us today. Of course, of course I do. Today's Thursday, it's new Gundam day. Yep. We have the newest Master Grade, the Delta Plus. I'm really yeah. excited because I really like the uh, Unicorn Gundam mm -hmm. designs. They're very sleek, you know, they're all business. And if you look inside here, you can see there's not a lot of parts, yeah. but uh, that's partially because of the sleek design. There's not a lot of armor. It Actually, only it's quite a nice finish already on the yeah, if, it, if you look at the yeah. uh, the colors that Bandai's molded, a little bit lighter than the Rezzle was. It's almost slightly it metallic. Out. Yeah, looks good. Cool. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good kit. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually excited for Gundam as well. Yeah, so uh, is there anything you want to ask me about the... Yeah, um, does it transform? You know, Ryan, I knew you'd ask that. And you know, it does. It does transform. Really? Yes, it does. And it's not called a transformer? <laughs> Check this out. Here's the instruction booklet. Transformation system. Wow, it does. No part swapping. Just, wow. just three and a half pages of instructions. Do you think it's going to be easier than the Macross to transform? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Most definitely. Okay. <laughs> because so. It doesn't have three <laughs> modes. It only has uh, the two modes. But cool. I'm definitely looking forward to giving it a oh, try. I'm excited to, yeah. to see this. So okay. you're going to build it? I will be building it. Awesome. Of course. All right. Now that we've got all the new stuff out of the way, let's have a look at your Hasegawa Raptor. Uh, what have you done since the uh, last time we looked at this thing? Um, sadly, not as much as I, I wanted to. I was a little sick last week. Um, but what I have done is I finally glued in, in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. I also applied that finish, um, the Vallejo finish. And I'm actually very happy at how it came out. Um, and, uh, and then after I'd actually applied the finish, I went over with the, um, the silver again. The weathering kit. The weathering kit again and just, uh, just softened that pink a little more. Uh, what I did underneath was I um, the two weapons bay. Um, I actually I glued them in. I'm actually going to seal these weapons bay, weapon bays, mm -hmm. so I won't be building all the little rockets and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm I'm very happy. I'm hoping by next week I would have had a lot more done, and then we can actually start looking at the the decals. Yeah, it looks good so far. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm mm -hmm. very happy. You're right on the verge of having a plane. You've got the yeah, both halves own, of it. Once you get these little innards finished yeah and just clamp that thing together and then good to go sweet all right thank you uh, well i look forward to the next episode of whatever it is of you're my doing pink plane of your pink plane yep what have you got but for this? now it's what i want to show everybody gumbo tv we're gonna uh have a closer look at the real grade zaku that came out last week all right so what i want to show everybody with the uh, real grade zaku is not necessarily the whole kit itself but more importantly the hands mm -hmm. So this is a normal uh, real grade hand. You get these with the, the real grade kits all the way from the RX-782 to uh, the L-Strike. And the, I mean, it's really impressive that they are articulate. They bend at the first joint there. But uh, there are some problems because they're so small, people are ending up actually breaking them. Mm. And for this real grade Zaka release, Bandai has given you an extra hand. Oh. It's actually molded all in one piece. It's not going to break and uh, it attaches the same way. So with it's the armor a piece. It's uh, it's there if you if you want to pose your Gundam, 
Uh, you can just use this hand instead of trying to open and close these fingers and risk breaking. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the other hand, they've given you one that uh, assembles onto the stock of the weapon. So you don't have to try and bend these uh, tiny fingers yeah, around the weapon. Fight with it. Yeah, yeah, so you just put that on there and you're good to go. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. So three sets of hands. You get uh, three sets of hands. Cool. One molded so that uh, it actually looks like it should. This is a step up. If yeah. They, if they continue no, to do this with the, with the rest of the real gear aid kits from the from here on out, like only good things. That's what, that's what I have to say. But uh, today, what I also wanted to show everybody here's the uh, RG Zaku. It's a Zaku. It is a Zaku. It doesn't quite look like a Zaku because it's yet. it's missing some pieces here. Yeah. And uh, what I thought we'd do with this guy. Uh, we had a lot of comments in the previous episode after Ryan showed the results with the weathering kit. Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd talk about weathering a, a kit. Yeah. Using, we'll show people you, how to use those uh, weathering kits. And for that, Ryan, I'm going to need your help. Yeah. Yay. You're asking for my help. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? <laughs> Just fell off my chair. <laughs> All right. So no, here's the parts that we can work on. Most of the armor. We can't do everything for the show, but here's a shield. Yeah. And uh, this would take the brunt of the damage, any damage, you know, it's going to take, it's going to block any incoming attacks. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing look like it's seen its share of wear and tear. Oh. So we've got weathering kits. Yeah, I'll go on in here. You've got well. your rust kit. I've also got darker rust, soot, as well as mud. We can put mud on the These legs. are so easy to use, which yeah. is great. Which is why yeah. we're going to show it to them. Yeah. And I've also got <clears throat> these files. And we're going to use these files mm. to muck up this gun. Cool. No turning back. And then I can do my fingernails afterwards. These are pretty good. You, you were serious about this. You're going to clean your nails with that. Wow. It's uh, maximizing use. All right. You know? Okay. Why don't you keep that one? <laughs> and I'll, I'll hold on to these. You. My nails are getting a bit long. Okay. I will use these ones today. <laughs> this is just the uh, tri tool set. Hasegawa tri tools. They sell a lot of uh, etching cutters and, and part cutters and things like that. So, first of all, what I would do on a normal uh, kit here, along the edges, you just want to mess it up, you know? This thing is not going to stay pristine through war. Add some edges in there. But if you just do it steady, it's going to look too uniform. Yeah. You kind of, some got to be deep mm. and some got to be kind of narrow here. We'll just do a little bit here. Poor fella. Yeah, closing you know, once, counter with once the you nail start, file. Uh, once you start messing this stuff up, you can't fix it. No. That's okay. And what I may, might do is actually... Uh, well, that's my biggest fear with battle damage. Like, you yeah. can kind of know what uh, you're doing. Because if you wreck it, it's... You see a lot of modelers when they're doing tanks. Yeah. Uh, they use a lot of reference materials. Yeah. So they'll have lots of pictures of old military tanks that have had the crap oh, kicked out of them. Okay. And they'll basically use that as a little bit of a template. Just to try and start here. I just want to put in a couple holes here. You know? I guess you could use drills and all kinds oh, of Oh yeah, stuff you can here. use anything. I mean, some people, what they will do uh, to make certain effects like melting is they'll actually take like a uh, pin and they'll heat it up and they'll hold it to the plastic so that it it melts around, you know, so it looks like a like a beam hit that's it, a laser beam that's and stuff. That's a good idea, yeah. yeah. I mean, we can't, I'm not going to play around with fire here on Gunpla TV, no. but... Uh, We'll just start it off here. Don't need to put too many in here, but you know. And even possibly remove a big chunk there. Oh, poor guy. Right. And uh, if I want to widen it up, there's all these files I can use. Get in here and just try to try to open this hole up a bit. You don't want it to be perfectly circular, right? Because yeah. <laughs> it just looks like you purposely made that. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite true. This might be good enough for what we're uh, going for here. Yeah, you should be able to get detail into there. Yeah. So what we're going to do now, Ryan, is we're going to get out that uh, rust color that you got there. And we'll start applying that. This rust is pretty cool because it's kind of thick. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Okay, so before we oh yeah before we put anything on here, let's talk about uh, there's rust and we have also have we have mud we have dirt and where would you put these things on a kit? Well, rust is probably not going to start 
in a place where the paint is still mm -hmm. covered, the metal. Mm -hmm. It has to the ha metal has to be exposed to something before yeah. it will rust. Yeah. So what we we've done is created these places that are exposed. So anything that we've totally like dug in here, we can start to put the rust on. And then with the um, the dirt or the soot, the darker colors, we can go into these grooves. So but you want to put a metallic down first. Over you can do that. I mean, then... this is really small. What we're working yeah. on now. What you could do is put that metallic inside there to show that's metal with the rust on top of it. Okay. So you get both kind of effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen people when they're doing this, they're not using weathering sets, but they use the Gundam markers mm -hmm. and they'll put the, the silver Gundam marker mm -hmm. in place and then they'll put the rust colored Gundam marker and things like that. But we're using the weathering kits now. So should I start with the silver? Well, that's why I'm having you help me here because you've used this. So I'm just going to say, why don't you take it away, right? <laughs> okay, I'll take it away. Um, there's, this does come with a warning. It says you should wear a face mask. Okay. I'm not, but you know, anything for TV. That's right. So I'll just apply the metal here. You see, it's, it goes on pretty nicely. Is it easy to take off is my next question. I never try to take it off, but I think maybe with water you could. Because uh, if you're putting metal over the entire thing, it might be a little too much, right? If I use the other one of these, am I able to like get a lot of this off? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty straight. What I tend to do is I tend to use one end to take oh. off what I don't want okay. before I move on. Then the metal will only stay Where you in the it. grooves yeah. right? where technically it's been all cut open. Cool. Yeah, you yeah. can see it. It's, it yeah. shows it pretty nicely there, yeah. actually. That's so good. do you want me to put that, some rust on there? So if you're going to put there? the rust on, just put it on the parts that we've opened up here. Okay, sure. Do you want some on the edges there? No, no, just keep it there for okay. now. Okay. Okay. It doesn't. You don't want it to be uniform because then it looks like you did yeah. everything the same. You want to. Also, I found with these uh, s these sets, these uh, weathering sets, mm -hmm. once you apply your finish, it really highlights it very yeah. nicely as well. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the idea is that you you want it to be subtle. You don't mm -hmm. want it to be very blatant from the start. So, if, I mean, this is. You can see there's the, the rust in here. A little bit too many uh, scrapes I put in here. It's gone mm -hmm. in there as well, but yeah, it can't be helped. Now what I want to do is I want to use this uh, this mud color and get just the edges. If I get the edges, just a little bit on here. Put it where I want it. This is similar to using brushes and enamels. And then try to get off as much as I can. Just leaving in the grooves. I also have a soot, which is really dark. If you're using, if you have like thruster areas and exhaust ports and stuff like that on the kit you're, you're using, the soot works very good. So what do we think so far? Yeah. See, it's all going in there. Yeah. There's plenty of uh, different colors with the weathering sets. So I think there's like six or seven different weathering mm. sets. You know, like has snow and of course the metal. There's even skin from, tones. Skin tones and stuff like that. Uh, what I want to do on this guy here is uh, this goes together as many different type, uh, sorry, many different uh, parts of metal, all the different shapes here. And uh, where would it rust was what I was thinking. What would, what would make it rust? Well, obviously rain would make it rust. And where would the, the water flow down? Well, it would from, go from the top and it would flow to underneath. Mm. So what I want to do is I want to take some of this rust and I want to add it only to these edges where I think the rust would run. And then take off all that excess that I don't need. You know, if you look at an old car that's beat up, the rust is always on those panels where the water would be flowing down for the most part, just like that. And I'll go ahead after and I'll dirty it up even more. But that's just how to use the uh, weathering master kits, yeah. more or less. It takes And these are very straightforward, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, it's a lot uh, 
it's, uh, sorry, it's very simple because you don't have to worry about cleanup mm. and things like that. If you're using enamels and enamel thinner and the top coats, it uh, can take time and there's lots of cleanup. With weathering kits, you just, it's like makeup, you just put it on there. And they, and, had, and they adhere to the surface pretty well, which yep. is nice. They don't just like flake off. If you, have, uh, if you have not cleaned the plastic surface or if it's very smooth, uh, it'll come off. But uh, if you go over it lightly with sandpaper, give it a little bit more surface friction, it'll, it'll stand mm -hmm. much better. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, you can see that I have not actually completed a lot of these parts. And uh, why is that? Well, uh, the dirt on these kind of parts would be inside, and these are very difficult to actually get inside there. What I would do in this case is I would find that runner with all these parts and I would actually apply all the muck first. Oh. Then I would cut it out and then I would put it in. That Otherwise you're sense. not gonna be able to get inside yeah. those tiny creases with the brushes we're using for the boiler yeah. kits. Not as well, I think. It was, yeah. It, was, yeah, it would not produce the same, yeah. the same effect, that's for sure. So uh, I'll weather this guy up and uh, we'll have him some shots to show everybody. Cool. All right. Uh, Sid, um, yeah. I noticed something's missing, the, the piping. Yeah, I actually haven't put on the uh, armored collars yet. As I intended to go through and uh, muck the sky up with files and stuff and create that damage, yeah. the uh, small rings, those armored collars would get in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do those separately. I'll damage them on their own and I'll uh, put the uh, effects on there and then I'll top coat them separately okay. from this and then I'll put it all together. Yeah, cool. And so we'll, where are, are you going to take photos? Are you going to bring them in, in for the next episode? Well, I'll have some, hopefully we'll have some photos up on uh, Hobby Link TV soon. And uh, speaking of Hobby Link TV, thank you everybody for joining the yeah. Hobby Link TV thank Facebook you. page. And uh, thank you for submitting your picture to the We Love Gumpa TV contest. And we will be announcing the end date for that contest in episode 49. Yep, 49. 49, so you have a little over a week left. Yeah, and we've seen some great entries. Yeah, so. it's, it's been a lot of fun so yeah. far. So keep sending them in and uh, everybody has a shot and we'll see you later. See you later.